Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite. In this video, we're going over the FinSuite CMS library for Webflow. We're in the live example going through the filter component. Before we get into this example, you must understand how this works. The filter component takes text that's inside of a collection item and it filters that item in the grid based on the text. So we have our collection list item here. This is Webflow CMS generated. Each one of these pieces of text is a way for this item to be filtered in the grid. We have 2020, blue, fun, CMS false, branding. This one is 2017, red, not fun, use CMS true, web design. These are controlled inside Webflow CMS. We have the year, we have a rich text of branding, web design, we have color in a drop down, we have the toggle, and we have fun. Updating any of these will update that text inside the item and then change how that item is filtered. So updating filters and types and all of that is very easy and very quick and can be managed by you or the client inside editor. You do not need to visibly see this text on the page. It needs to be on the published site, but it does not need to be visible. In all of these examples, we're going to keep the filters visible because we want to show that it's actually working. But if you wanted to hide these on the published site, you can do that. I can hide this right here, just show project name, and it's still going to filter by all of these filter options. It's gonna filter by 2017, red, not fun. Everything is going to work. Does not need to be visible, just needs to be there. Let's jump into examples and see how this works. Let's look at filtering items with one filter group with the filter type of multi. Filter type multi allows you to check multiple options at once. So if I go and select blue, the grid is going to update with blue, we're only showing blue here. If I were to click red, it's going to add red to the filtered grid. And now we're seeing blue and red, and then yellow and orange and green. And now we're seeing everything. I can unselect, I can select as many as I want, one, two, any type of combination. And you can see as I'm filtering through this grid, the grid is updating quickly, and reliably. That is how we filter with one filter group and option multi. We're in designer. If you already watched example one, this example two is the exact same setup inside designer. Literally nothing is changing. The only thing that's changing is one option inside JavaScript, but we'll go through it again in case you didn't see it or you want to really understand how the structure works. We have our dynamic list. We are applying a class of collection list to the collection list element. Not the collection list wrapper. This is not the class we care about. We care about collection dash list applied to the collection list element. Next, we need to have a class on our parent wrapper. This is the wrapper that is holding the filter buttons inside of our filter group. And here we have filters dash wrapper. This is a parent element. We have the text in here. doesn't matter as long as it's some type of parent of all of these filter buttons in our color group. And the last thing we need to do is apply the data attribute of filter by to each of these buttons. So here we have filter by blue, filter by red, filter by yellow, filter by orange, filter by green. And what this is doing is it is searching for the text blue inside the collection item. So if it finds blue, it's gonna filter when blue is selected. If it doesn't find blue, blue is not going to be filtered. And the last thing we'll look at here is the add-on class. Each one of these has an FLTR active class, which allows you to give an active state to a button when that filter is enabled. 
as you can see, each one of these looks different with this class applied because we have this nice add-on class of the color in between, which allows us to use this add-on class in a really powerful way. Nice. That's all we need in terms of structure. Now let's go into the custom code and see how this works. Let's go through this custom code. If you just watched example one, this is the exact same code with the exception of filter type multi. If you didn't see it or you want to review again, we're going over it again. The very first thing we have to do before the closing body tag is to add the FN Suite CMS library script. When we launch the library, we'll have a live hosted script file for you. Right now, this is not the real script file. Then we have our project specific script. And in this script, we're first going to run a function that's going to happen immediately. We need to create a new instance of our library, new FS library. We are targeting the collection list class. This is the class that we applied to that dynamic list collection list element. We're storing all of this new instance information in a variable called projects grid. And we're going to use projects grid later on here when we filter. After we have that projects grid variable, we're going to create our array. Our array is a list and it is going to define the filter groups that we want to filter by and how we filter by them. We have filter wrapper, which is the parent wrapper, the parent class of all the buttons inside that filter group. In this case, it's filters dash wrapper. This is what's containing all of our filter buttons. Filter type is multi. This means that we can fil filter by multiple options at the same time. We can click blue, red, orange, all at the same time, multi. We're storing this information, this list of our filter groups in a variable called my filters. Then we need to go and run this filter component on our project grid. So we have our project grid, the variable that we created up here, and we're going to filter by our filter array of my filters, which is what we just defined here. So we're filtering a multi on all of these filter buttons that have the colors on them. We have our active class defined as FLTR active, and we have some animation on here. Enable true, duration of 200 milliseconds, easing of ease out, and effects with a fade translate with 20 pixels on the y-axis. If you don't know how to do the animation, if this is not clear on how you can write these effects, use our script generator. It's going to allow you to do anything and you don't even have to write any type of code to make your animation happen. That's it, that's all we need to do in order to set up our filters on the page. That's effing sweet.